Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Williams. I am a student in Dr. Bolton's Studies in Film International Cinema Course, and today we are going to look at the closing scene of a German expressionism film called The Cabinet of Dr. Karl Garley, scripted by Karl Mayer and Hans Janowitz, and directed by Robert Wien. This film was released in 1920 and plays a hugely influential role in German expressionism and in the mood of Germany's nation. An analysis of The Cabinet of Dr. Karl Garley Many people have concluded that the ending sequence is the most important scene in the entire film. But why is that? Well, let's take a look. In this shot, Francis has read through the director's journal, abducted the somnambulist with the help of others, and is prepared to accuse the director of being Dr. Caligari. Looking at the scene, we should be able to point to at least one thing about what we see on camera that seems abnormal. See it yet? No? How about the walls and the door? I challenge you to come up with one place in real life where we see walls with all these wacky designs on them that come out of the floor at odd angles, and doors and doorways that become skinnier the farther you move away from the ground. These set choices are part of a term known as mise-en-scene, which in film means everything going on in front of the camera. Other parts of, the, of a film encapsulated in mise-en-scene might include what the actors are doing, costume design, props, and lighting. In this film, the mise-en-scene is majorly distorted from reality, as we can see in the wall, door, and doorway designs. Though we may not feel that the film is very emotionally involving, we can imagine that for people who have not yet experienced sound or the picture quality that we have today, that these images might contribute to the overall sense of anxiety in the audience at what is to come. Another intriguing aspect of this film is the way the filmmakers choose to shape the frames. As you will notice, when Francis accuses the director, we see a few vertical, instead of horizontal, shots of the director. We might take these to signify that the director is trapped. Previous shots have shown us that Francis can easily prevent him from escaping should he try, so he is trapped in a physical manner. Taking it a step further, we can say that the director is also symbolically trapped, for he does not have an immediate alibi prepared to deny that he is Caligari. That does not mean that he is not scheming, though. The sudden change to darker lighting supports the perception that he is evil, while his expressions tell us that he is trying to think of a way to, to escape his predicament. Ultimately, Mayon Yanowitz had intended for the director to represent the government, or the group of people who had the power to order others to go to war. And they wanted the film to attack people's trust and authority with the film ending as the director is locked up. But the film's director, Robert Weenie, decided that the ending the movie here was not going to fly, and added this last sequence. Consensus among film scholars says that Weenie did not know of the subversive intentions of the film, but instead was following through on the intentions of Fritz Lang, who had been asked to direct the film, but turned down the opportunity in order to focus on another project. Thus, Weenie added this final ending scene, mostly just to carry out Lang's intentions and ideas. This new ending scene get, puts Myers and Janowitz's story within a story that tells us that Francis is mentally ill. Francis' home becomes an asylum when we see a man at the base of the stairs, yelling and looking deranged, and a woman playing an imaginary piano. Francis is revealed as not entirely reliable when we see Cesare still alive in the corner when he was supposedly killed. It would seem that Weenie had unintentionally flipped Maya and Janowitz's message on its head to praise authority instead of attack it with this change. But that is not entirely true. When they were robbed of their subversive storyline, Maya and Janowitz found other ways to still carry out their subversive intentions with the added scene. Look at the floor. Now, tell me, does any floor in real life actually look like the floor here? The story writers brought in set designers Herman Warm, Walter Rowe Rigg, and Walter Ryman on the film to make the set look as unreal as possible. By continuing the distorted scenery through the ending, they managed to dismantle the authority-friendly messages sent by Weenie's adapted storyline. Furthermore, they continue to use the frame shape as they have done before. When they flash Cesare from the Francis's perspective, they make him look like he is in the coffin again by 
a way of using the set and a vertical shot. This reminds viewers, likely subconsciously, of the way that he was used previously by Dr. Caligari, that is, as an unthinking slave. Everything that happens to Cesare does not happen because Cesare willed it to, but rather because Caligari orders him to do it. In other words, he is the perfect, unthinking, submissive German soldier who is harmed or killed as a result of someone else forcing him to fight rather than choosing to fight. Although this frame is not nearly as direct in its defiance of the new ending as the four, it is enough to remind us of the horrors of the story that we have heard, and to tell us that everything is not alright. Another intriguing choice in this final scene, which continues from the rest of the movie, is the choice to frame some shots within a circle. We see this most of all with Jane in this final scene as Francis attempts to woo her again. In this instance, it might be safe to say that we are viewing Jane through Francis's perspective. The film closes its frame onto her, with the camera angled at her from a view similar to that of Francis. However, showing characters from the perspective of another is not all that happens right here. In these instances where the frame takes the shape of a circle, we see that the film is nearly always focusing on the face of one specific character. Thus, we can take frames shaped as circles as clear indicators to focus on the emotion of the character centered in the frame, as well as consider if we are looking at the person through the eyes of another. Lastly, take a look at the scene in which the doctor's attendants and the director attempt to secure Francis into a straitjacket. The resistance Francis put for puts forth might be considered by many to just be natural plot development. But if we take Francis as the citizen and the asylum staff as the authority, we can see the attack on authority once again brought to the forefront of the film. Unintentionally, Weenie has contributed to the messages, messages Meyer and Janowitz once sent by having Francis fight his suppression instead of choosing to let the director cure him. With these messages that keep portraying Dr. Caligari's character negatively, we view Dr. Caligari's final line, Now I know how to cure him, with a lot more skepticism than we would without seeing the continued distortion or fight. There is undoubtedly more parts of these scenes that I did not unpack, and you may disagree with some things that I have said. So, leave your comments below, and I will respond to them as I have time. Otherwise, keep watching, analyzing, and enjoying movies. Peace out.